Welcome to the watering hole. We're sitting down today with Mr. Cameron Marlowe. How are you doing? I'm doing great, y'all. Thank you for having me on. So you came up from Billy Bob's last night, and we then did. you're playing the tumbleweed here tonight in Stillwater. I know. I'm really worried about my liver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the check engine light's on, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you'll get through. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it. Yeah. So uh, what, what's it like to get to play like? Two like iconic like red dirt Texas country music venues back to back. Man, it's pretty freaking wild. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it's uh, it's pretty cool for a small town boy from Carolina yeah. uh, being able to come out this way and play some cool cool places like this. And uh, the crowds have been great, man. Yeah. Everybody seems to be accepting me pretty well, which is good. Yeah. So I appreciate that. So we're gonna see what tonight looks like. That's awesome. So uh, coming from Carolina, how much like. Had you heard of like the red dirt scene? How much were you exposed to it growing up? The kind of scenes that you're getting to play here this weekend uh, at Billy Bob's and yeah. the Tumbleweed? Uh, I was definitely always a fan of Texas music growing up, uh, especially like, I mean, you go back in the 90s and you look at the Texas artists, even the Oklahoma artists that mm -hmm. came out during then, even into the early 2000s. Uh, some of the best music that was made, in my opinion, came out of this area. And then I would say as I got a little older, um, I definitely listened to what was coming out of Nashville. Didn't love it. Didn't love it at all. Uh, and then when I came into town, I wanted to try to make music my own way and make it a little different and yeah. use some of the roots that I have. And I have a lot of blues background, a lot of rock background. Yeah. Um, so I kind of introduced that into some of my, my writing. Yeah. How would you like kind of compare and contrast kind of like the North Carolina music scene, kind of East Coast uh, country music scene to kind of what we have here in this kind of part of the country it's a very different thing i would say the scene is not huge as far as like at least carolina yeah uh, i would say that it's a lot of local guys that it sucks to say they get stuck in the same cycle and play yeah. the same places all the time um and luckily i was one that was able to, to get out and go somewhere else and be able to start playing yeah. other places that's awesome yeah uh, you mentioned your liver earlier. What is your drink of choice? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's Jack Daniels, and it's it's not good for me, man. <laughs> it's not, buddy. But we're having a good time doing it, you know. Yeah, we we've uh, we interviewed a. Uh, well, we I don't know if you heard the the lowdown dr drifters before. Oh yeah. Uh, we we interviewed them back in December, <laughs> and they uh, it was actually their lead singer's birthday at the time. And we we didn't know that they had a policy of only drinking Jack Daniels wherever they go. Oh. And they call themselves a brown li liquor band. They only do that because I, apparently it keeps them reined in if they don't have to drink i guess vodka and, yeah see i can't drink vodka things, vodka yeah. does the same thing i get i don't like clear liquor yeah yeah but yeah. i damn that's wild so, i guess i can do tequila but other yeah. than that well, well the, the crazy thing is they walked in with a handle of jack, jack daniels and we had one for, for him for his birthday already yeah. that they, they didn't know about and we just like got lucky <laughs> that, that we brought him the right kind <laughs> i was like well we yeah. lucked out there. <laughs> Hell yeah. And they probably finished it off that night, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, um, they were going pretty hard that day. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe it. So I saw you did uh, Tracy Lawrence's podcast a while ago. Oh, yeah. Back. Can you talk to us about that? Like, how was that? That that had to have been like, such a cool experience. Oh, absolutely, man. He had me out at his house, which is where he does it at. And, man, he, it was cool before we even did the podcast. He, like, took me around, showed me showed me his farm and everything. It was great. And uh, he is just an amazing person, just yeah. one of the nicest guys ever. And I'm such a fan of his music yeah. as well. And just being able to, like, be in his presence, learn a little bit from him, and then be able to be on a podcast with him, man. It was cool yeah. as hell. Yeah. It was a good time. Have you have you done, like, a lot of podcasts or just, like, a handful? Uh, I do some. I don't yeah. usually do them. I, I'm not the best talker, yeah. <laughs> and I know that. <laughs> I usually say I'm pretty dumb, uh, but – I didn't really go to college, you know. <laughs> I just barely scraped by. So uh, I, I do every once in a while. But, yeah. yeah. Well, we're, we're ha happy to have you here today. No, and no, I appreciate it. On, Absolutely, man. So what are you doing when you're not out playing music, like, hobby-wise? Man, I love to fish and hunt. Uh, okay. We got this weekend, me and my tour manager, we're uh, hopefully hitting up this uh, opening opening uh, turkey season yeah. back in Tennessee. So we're yeah. going to knock that out this weekend. And then uh, doing some fishing down in Key West coming up. So trying to get get around and do some hunting and fishing and writing as well. I, I assume you're probably normally a freshwater guy, I, or are, no, you, are you usually saltwater? No, guy? North Carolina, I, I did a lot more saltwater really? fishing. Yeah, huh. so uh, I love saltwater fishing. Uh, I definitely bass fish too. Not not great yeah. at it by no means, but I do. I That's do cool. like to get out there and do it. So yeah. what what kind of fish do you catch with? Like, what's your like most common fish you might catch in saltwater? What we go after usually is red drum. That's what okay. I chase most of the time. So that's like our, our trophy out there that we like to eat. So that's okay. all, I, I don't know if it's like really? what everyone loves, but that's what we go after. Huh. 
That's, that's it. I, I don't really know a lot about saltwater fishing, so it's really interesting to kind of learn about it. Because yeah. obviously, there's not a whole yeah, lot of saltwater yeah. in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of drive a little bit yeah. to get some. Yeah. So yeah. you grew up in North Carolina. What what part of North Carolina did you grow up in? Kannapolis, North Carolina. Kannapolis. So, home of Dale Earnhardt. That's about really? the only thing we got. Yeah, yeah. that's why I'm well, rocking a shirt today. There you man. go. <laughs> I, I assume you're a big NASCAR fan. I then? am, man. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, we get to play the race this year uh, in really? Charlotte. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be cool. like a hometown race yeah. kind of deal because I'm not – my town's not far from Charlotte. It's yeah. about 45 minutes. Really? Yeah. You know – I think you know more about NASCAR than I do. I don't really know a whole lot. A, a little bit, yeah. yeah. I, do you have, like, a favorite driver? Currently? Right, yeah, right now I, I would have to say Ross Chastain, just because okay. I'm buddies with some of the guys over in the track house thing. So uh-huh. Chastain, man, he's been killing it. And he drives Chevy, and I'm a Chevy guy, so okay. that's, what we, that's what we roll with. Well, so you said on the you said on Tracy's podcast that you bought your you bought a truck that was like your first big purchase. It was okay. Yeah, I, I had a well, I had a what a 1500 in high school. It was a what 01 1500. Chevrolet, and then uh, I wrecked it, destroyed it. I mean, ran straight into the yeah. back of a cop's vehicle. Uh, it was an off-duty cop. Nice. Yeah, destroyed it. Uh, it was not fun. And then I had a Chevrolet cruise, and that thing sucked. <laughs> and that's what I drove back and forth to Nashville. I hated that damn car. It's still, I still have it. It still runs, which is wild. It's got like 700,000 miles on it. <laughs> so uh, when I finally... Like got my record deal and everything. The first thing I wanted to do was get myself a good yeah. truck. So I got a uh, one of the uh, AT fours from GMC. Nice. So I love I, it. But uh, my my first truck was a 2000 1500 Silverado really? too. So yeah, the man. same body style. It's essentially the same. Dude, truck. that truck was me. awesome. Dude, it was bulletproof it. too. Yeah. That engine yeah. they had in there, that five three was killer. Yeah. My, my my parents not have it now, and uh, once I get kind of more into adulthood I, I plan to buy it back from them yeah man uh, because I, I i love that truck it's such a such a good truck oh yeah yeah, yeah. they're awesome yeah <laughs> i'm kind of jealous of your like beater that we have now. oh yeah to, yeah to Wait, roll around I, it. <laughs> after, after that that truck I, I have like a it's a 2010 toyota uh camry really hell yeah dude and <laughs> i bet it runs like crazy too it won't die <laughs> it won't it won't i i as much as much hell as that car has been through it still runs fine i don't know how and hey, we're, we're fixing to drive we, it we load it down and drive it all over the yeah, place it's, oh, yeah. yeah we we drove it <laughs> we uh i don't know if you ever heard of born and raised here in oklahoma uh-huh. so it, it's a bit big music festival over in prior gotcha it's it's really similar to calf ride that they have oh, here yeah. coming up at, at the tumbleweed and so we went from prior to here which is about i don't know an hour and a half drive mm-hmm. pr- uh, here to prior and then back and then to durant because we interviewed william clark green oh yeah during that weekend and then back to prior so we ran all Man. over the state <laughs> in that car and i don't know how it didn't just dis- decide to quit but <laughs> it's still fine well man we just played nacogdoches the other day and they gave us a vehicle to drive around in and they gave us a damn humvee and I am in the market, so if anybody is listening to this thing and has a Humvee for sale, hit me up, because I am trying to buy one. That is the most badass thing ever. The only thing I've ever heard about those cars is that they burn gas like crazy. Oh, yeah. It's like four miles to the gallon, but I've never felt more American in my life. We loaded it down with fishing rods because we try and fish on the road and just went out to a pond and drove that thing everywhere. It was the best. We loved it. You, you need to get a Humvee and then wrap it. And then, like, get, like, a graphic, like, your face, and then, like, an American flag <laughs> waving and a bald, a bald eagle. eagle. Yeah, yeah. He, that, then he could fantastic. do the, uh, what's the first lap at the race is called? Uh, the, uh, where they have Shoot. someone go out and do, like, the first oh, lap. Oh, like the, uh, yeah, like, yeah. The, not the courtesy lap, but... Uh, I forget what it's called, but yeah. Yeah, you could do that in, in yeah, the, the, that would be yeah, sick. That would be perfect. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> um, so hilarious. you just recently were featured on the new Hicks tape yeah, album. Man. Uh, yeah. What was that experience like? It was cool. Uh, Hardy hit us up and asked if we wanted to jump on this year's, and with it being uh, Diff Tape, which mm-hmm. I'm a humongous Joe Diffie fan, so uh, being able to like be a part of that was awesome. Uh, they had a great mindset for all the songs, and they picked the best songs, in my opinion. And I was on a song that I love. It's called Night to Remember, and it's one of my favorite Joe Diffie songs. So I was like, man, it just kind of fell into place. Yeah. It's fun. I was on there with uh, old Lauren Watkins. I don't know if y'all yeah. met her yet. She's great. No, we haven't. Uh, yeah, I, it was really crazy. I Whenever they dropped it and they announced it, it was like this was like the last thing Toby Keith yeah, recorded. It sure is. I'm like, man. I'm like, that's that's crazy. And then I went and listened to all, all the songs, and I I loved the the one that Do- Dove Keith was on. It was oh, fantastic. Dude, it was so good. So yeah. did they just pull like the the masters from those original songs to be able to use his voice and stuff on there? Yeah, I that? think they had the stems just somewhere in a vault, and uh, okay. so they gave them 
I guess they gave them access to all of the masters yeah. and all the stems through, and then they were able to kind of dig in yeah. and dig through it. It's cool. So talk, so talk me through how you like got into. Well, I guess how you got into playing music, and yep. then your transition to like going to Nashville and getting big. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, man. I, I speak, real, speak personally. I guess. Real quick, <laughs> since you said that, I think. As of now, I think you're technically yeah. the biggest guest we've had on. Yeah. Oh, well, shoot. Numbers yeah. wise and everything, yeah. I think I think that's. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. So thank you. For yeah. That. No, yeah. absolutely, yeah. man. I would say uh, I got into music through the church. Uh, I grew up in a small Southern Baptist church, and that's kind of what led me to start singing and stuff like that. So I started singing. Uh, fast forward, going into high school, uh, I wanted to learn guitar because guitar got girls and. That's what I, that's what I, or at least that's what I thought. I didn't get girls. Um, no, so I learned guitar, started singing and playing guitar, and then started playing like random places that would let me. Like if they had like a coffee shop or something in, in downtown, I'd go in there and and play, and I'd make money off of it. And that was my way of making gas money as well as working. So I was trying to like balance that, having another job. I worked at Chick Fil A in that time, uh, and then. Um, so I guess I did that. I started a band in high school and then tried to go to college to study music. That was the worst decision. I just drank my way through college and then <laughs> or my first semester and then flunked out. So uh, you really got to study music then. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So I, uh, I left college. Uh, I kind of didn't really know what to do. Um, and I just went to work. So I started selling car parts for uh, General Motors. And I was working there for I would say three or four years ended up getting a call to go on the voice they hit me up very randomly and uh, I had posted some videos and stuff mm -hmm. online they hit me up I went to LA for that and that was like my first time like having I guess you could say a music job where I just did nothing but focus on music the whole time and I was like this is exactly what I want to do I don't want to do anything else um, so I came back and I was like well I can't like I, that already gave me the bug so I was like I gotta keep going um, so then I started going to Nashville because that's the closest place that had any kind of music like influence yeah. at all. So I started going to Nashville as much as I possibly could. Uh, met some songwriters out there, started writing some songs, um, and then decided to put one out, and it completely changed my life, man. Wow. Yeah. What? Sorry, that was a really long, no, winding no. story. That's, <laughs> that's perfect. What, what, what was your fir fir first single again? It was called Giving You Up. Okay. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's what I thought. So if you could, we've had several people that have been on The Voice or American Idol or things like that but if you could go back and tell your your younger self like hey do this or don't do this would you do it again or um i wish i'd have just went to nashville instead yeah. of doing that whole process because now i feel like i'm or like there for a while i was mm -hmm. the voice guy and yeah I, I hate that title yeah. so uh it's definitely worth it for someone that wants to go do it but yeah. for me like i just I didn't want to be known as the voice guy like i wanted right. to write songs and be a songwriter that's yeah. what my passion is so yeah uh, who did you pick on The Voice? I was with Blake. You were with Blake? Yeah. Naturally. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. How, how, what, what was it like being like coached by him? Oh, he's cool, man. He yeah. was real cool. Uh, we got to see him a couple times, <laughs> but filming and uh, is a little different than, well, I guess you could yeah. say the behind the scenes is a little different yeah. than out in the open. But, yeah, I mean, he's a awesome guy. So I run into him every once in a while. Really? Still. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, and he still remembers me, which oh, is wild. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that, that's really cool. Would you ever be a judge on The Voice if they asked you to do that? I don't know, man. Like I said, I can't talk, so <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I saw on, I think it was YouTube, that you put out a live band cover of Folsom Pr Pr Prison Blues. Yeah, man. And it, it's fantastic. Appreciate it. Thank you. What what made you like pick that song to like put out a, a cover for well some of the first memories of music that i have is with my grandpa and he listened to johnny cash non-stop um johnny cash and brooks and dunn two top top tier for like that was yeah. that was the only two country artists yeah. that he would go listen to um so i just i've always loved johnny cash and then having that kind of like be my beginning influence and listening to so much of that, I was like, you know what? I want to go back and recreate it and kind of do it how I would do it now. And uh, we had to, like, go through some through some hoops and stuff like that. And we had to record it and then send it to Johnny's team. And they they have to approve it and tell you yes. And one of the coolest moments I got was, like, Johnny would have been really proud of this. So, really? And I was like, man, all right. I, I didn't get to hear it from him, obviously. But yeah. I got to hear it from his team and his family. So wow, I, that was that was pretty cool. That that That's really cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
you should have covered um, one piece at a time since you used to work at GM. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no kidding, man. <laughs> I forgot about that song. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good that's one. A, that's a great song. That's a when he said one. he used to work at GM, yeah. and then Johnny Cash, it made me think of that. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you wouldn't have had to pay for your dream truck, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How often do you get confused with? Uh, Old Dylan? Yeah. <laughs> All the time, buddy. All the time. Do we they both call you brothers, or yes, we always get okay. called brothers, and we've been joking about it here lately. I saw him, uh, guy, when they had CRS or something back in town, and I hadn't seen him in a while, and he's like, "Man, I get that I'm your brother, like." every show and i'm like dude i get the exact same thing and he was like we should just sit down we'll go get one of those ancestry.com tests we'll send it in and we're gonna just sit together and we're gonna find out if we're related or not yeah, that, get to the bottom of this that, that would be a great video oh i know <laughs> and he's he's so funny man he's a good kid i like that guy well, howdy folks welcome down to bad brad's barbecue <laughs> hey stop looking at gus stop it stop it all right folks you see here jack is trying to throw some cornhole and he just can't get her done. I just cannot hit anything today. I see that, Jagger. Man, you gotta have some bad brads. Play that crap in your under. Vernon always coming in clutch with the barbecue. Oh, yeah, look at that bite, folks. All right, Jagger, let's see it. Look at that. Brad no. Bad brads, where you can't help but be good. Like Jagger said, folks, bad brads barbecue, where it's good to be bad. I like that guy. <laughs> that Who are some like up and coming artists right now that you think people should like look out for? Man, right now, I don't know if you've heard of Wyatt McCubbin. Uh, no. Zach Top. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, Zach oh, Top's yeah. the freaking man. Uh, <laughs> Wyatt McCubbin is equally as awesome. He uh, he opened up for us on our, our very first tour. One of the best songwriters I have ever met, and just country down to the core. From like up in Ohio, but good God Almighty. That dude's got a thicker accent than I've ever heard <laughs> it from anybody. But he is just an a incredible guy, an incredible singer, uh, and a hell of a writer, man. Uh, he wrote a lot with me on this last pro or this new project that I'm putting out. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, when is that coming out? May 10th. May 10th. What, what's, the, what's the name of it? It's called Keeping the Lights On. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's that's like this, the yeah. track that we just released. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of about a conversation I had with my pops. So uh, we never grew up with anything. Yeah. Like, uh, we were always pretty pretty broke but uh we made do and everything um uh, and my dad has had the same job for freaking 20 some years and um he lost it this past i guess fall and uh when that factory shut down it was like they had no idea what to do yeah. i mean the, and I, I went home because they were kind of struggling they just needed just some family time kind of thing and i went home and me and pops had a, had a drink on the back porch and we were just sitting there talking and he was like man for the first time in my life, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep the lights on. Mm. And I was like, man. And uh, luckily, he ended up finding me a new job, and uh, they're doing a lot better now and doing doing good. So yeah. uh, that's kind of where the, the idea of that song came yeah. from, and it's just about pursuing and keeping keeping strong when things get tough. That's awesome. So you have uh, two duet or collabs out. You have one with Megan Maroney and one with uh, Ella Langley. Yeah. If you had to pick which one of those – was your favorite to to work with? I'll put oh, you on man. the spot. I yeah. love no, I love both <laughs> of them. Um, Ella's a badass. She's awesome. Yeah, uh, and she's I'm closer with Ella than mm -hmm. I am with Megan. I mean, I, I no disrespect to her at all. I love her to death. Uh, I just know Ella. I've known her longer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was just like getting to work with old friends, you know. Yeah. So we yeah. just had a good time. Yeah. We sat down. We wrote the song together too, versus me just jumping on mm -hmm. somebody else's song. Yeah, yeah. What What's been your favorite song that you've written and gotten to play and record? Ooh. It's definitely not the early stuff. Um, <laughs> I would say I have this song that's coming out. It's called Never Really Know. Um, it's on this new project. And it's it kind of changed my whole mindset on what this project's going to be. It's a very real like song about mm -hmm. people that overdose and uh, there's a lot of alcohol addiction and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, it's... Uh, it's so real of a song that I, it kind of changed my mindset of how I wanted to write this this record. And, yeah. and I'm really excited to kind of like step into this new side of writing that I've been doing. Yeah. And I think this record kind of shows it yeah. a little bit. I think, uh, I think in like country music in general over the past, like really since COVID, I think it's been, it seems like country music has been focusing more on writing. Yeah, if, man. If I, I, I don't know how Which I, in I love that. Yeah. No, in Nashville, I would say, there's definitely those those rights that get on the schedule that I cancel uh, immediately. <laughs> just man, because I feel like sometimes you write the same song over yeah. there, and there's yeah. 
So I don't really write a lot in Nashville now. I, I write a lot by myself, and mm-hmm. I write with a lot of my core people that I know yeah. know how to write the songs that how I would as well. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of you, you yeah. want something real to yeah, what yeah, your yeah, pro- your experience in life is, and with exactly. the people that you probably are interacting with uh, on yeah. a semi d- d- daily basis and you kind of want that real aspect and it really shines through in your m- music as well appreciate that and I, I really think that's what is appealing to really this new era of country l- music listeners i think so too really real I, I agree and i think that finally the beats and stuff are <laughs> moving as a way to to the past and yeah. i think people are really focusing <laughs> yeah. on some lyrics and yeah. i think that's what country music was exactly. based off of anyway. So, we're so, getting back. So, I mean, as, as as I'm sure you know, as like a country music listener and an artist, it seems like it's kind of went through an ebbs and flows over the past 20 years. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, forever. But uh, where do you think country music will be in five years? I think if anybody knew, <laughs> I would, they would be, they'd be a millionaire right now. Because yeah. um, everybody wants to, to be the new thing. Uh, we're, we're, Zach Bryan, I think, started a movement, yeah. and I'm stoked for it. Yeah. I really am. I love what he's doing. Um, and then there's also, have you heard of Old 60? Yeah. That sound is, sorry, I don't know if I can cuss, but it's awesome. Yeah. It is <laughs> yeah. cool. That kid is awesome. <laughs> I've not got to meet that guy yet, but I am all about that music. Yeah. And I want to see it kind of start going that way. Yeah. So I, that's just my personal yeah. opinion on which side I want it to go, but... I, yeah. I've got to give Rhett a, a, a shout out here, okay? Because um, they they broke through like middle March, really is when they they kind of really their album yeah. hit like number one or number two on Apple Music. It was like two or three weeks before then, like in like mid February, he was like, "Man, you got to listen to these guys." I've been listening to them too for like a couple months here, yeah. But like they're really going to be the next big thing. Yeah, he man. showed me S- smoking a lot. I'm like, dude, this is this song's awesome, <laughs> it's crazy. And man. Uh, and they had less than a thousand monthly listeners on Spotify when he showed dude, me. Dude, I love that's <laughs> fucking awesome, man. He I called love it. that. You he did. Called you it. called it. Yeah. You getting some A and R, man. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, man, that's have, awesome. Have you heard of Treaty Oak Revival? Yeah. Okay. They're freaking sick yeah. too, yeah. man. I love it. That that sound too, I think, is really kind of. Yeah. It, it's all kind of meshing together, but I, I, I really like it, too. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of hate – I feel like people keep calling it this folk thing, but it's not. I mean, it truly is – it's songwriting to its core, yeah. and it's, it is country freaking music, and it's coming from country-ass people. So, yeah. I, I, what I think, I think it's just country music. So Yeah, and I think, I think that means different things to di- different people. We, we were talk, talking about this earlier. It's like there's – Different sounds that are appealing to people, but it's still country music. Exactly. Like, like at Treaty Oak or Whiskey Myers, or so, like people like that. Yeah. The, they have more of like a southern rock mm. vibe, you know, kind of a little bit harder. Then you have like a Zach Bryan or like White Flores has got more of that acoustic feel, the more kind of folksy yeah. songwriter feel. And then there's like the traditional c- country music, like Zach Top. Mm. Like he's got that real like honky tonk sound to him. So I think country music is whatever it is to whoever's listening to it yeah, really. man, absolutely yeah. i agree so what is your favorite like venue to play that you play kind of frequently is there something sure. out there that you still kind of frequently hit or i wouldn't say frequently but i i do have to hit charlotte every year but mm-hmm. that's my hometown bar that's where i saw some of my first concerts yeah and uh i actually saw blake shelton there <laughs> when i was young really? uh which is wild and uh so it's called um, Coyote Joe's, and that's probably my favorite yeah. favorite venue to play, just because it's hometown crowd. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're gonna go back there this year on this uh, on the next tour we're doing. Yeah, at least finish up the tour there. Hey so guys, we want to tell you a little bit about Dead Wake Archery Innovations. They got all kinds of awesome stuff. They create their very own custom designed CNC mill bows, and they do all kinds of uh, crazy colors with the anodization. And uh, you want to tell them a little bit more? Yeah. So it is a Oklahoma State graduate. They're, they're in Kansas, Oklahoma is where they're established. Uh, they do some great stuff. Great killing machines for the water, honestly. <laughs> and uh, just go, go check them out. Thank you so much for Dead Wake Archery Innovation for sponsoring this podcast. So what about like – so I'm sure you tr- travel around a lot of different places, a lot of different states, I'm sure. Besides, obviously, your hometown state of North Carolina, what's, like, the your favorite state that you've played in? Favorite state? I love going to Montana. I Montana is yeah. my favorite place in the world. Like, if I could sell everything I have and just build a little cabin <laughs> on a piece of land out there, my life would be set. Are, are you a Yellowstone fan? I, I am, but it's 
like I don't, I don't like it because of that. I went to Montana before that yeah. whole show came out, but it was more of just like the being out there and just feeling like there's nobody around, yeah. and you can just stand and look around and there's nothing but what God created. Yeah. Totally, totally different than living in Nashville and sitting in traffic for 45 minutes just trying yeah. to get 10 minutes down the road. Yeah. So I miss that a lot. Yeah. I miss the country so much. And I I think here, me and Megan, my fiance, we're, we're hopefully moving in like a couple months and just yeah. getting away. I think we're going to get about an hour outside of town and just yeah. – it's too much, man. It yeah. really is. It's just I, too much. I, I can just imagine living in a city like yeah, that big. It sucks. <laughs> I, I've never imagined living in a city, and it is awful. That's something that's really awesome about like Stillwater, because we both come from very, very small towns. Yeah. And uh, this seems like Stillwater has a little bit of everything with still being kind of like a small town. Yeah. Too. Obviously, you got the university here that every – Every spring and fall, you get a big influx of people. But during the summer and the winter, like it's like really chill. There's no traffic on the roads oh, at all. That. It's so awesome. Yeah. And then in the fall, you can go watch fo- football. See, that's games. awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't want to go anywhere where I can't get to yeah. a football game. Are yeah. you a college football fan? I am, but coming from North Carolina, I'm like we're yeah. not we're not the best by <laughs> no means. <laughs> so I'll, I'll focus more on NFL, which I know that's kind of sacrilegious around here. But yeah, what's but, your what's your team? Uh, Chiefs. Okay. So my family's really? from up that way. Yeah. Uh, I, I I was gonna guess the the, the Panthers. Oh hell! <laughs> <laughs> they came into the game too late, man. We were already Chiefs fans before they came yeah. in. <laughs> See, I'm a I'm a Cowboys fan, so we're in total opposite ends of the spectrum. You guys, you get to experience winning and being good, and we oh just no, get no, to no 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 no, buddy, we experience <laughs> we experience losing for a long time, <laughs> just every season getting beaten the hell down. <laughs> But uh, we finally got us. A, we got us a squad. We'll yeah. see what the we'll see what we do this you, year. You, you guys thinking th- three peat this year? No, I, I personally don't think so. Yeah. We lost man. We lost Legere Sneed, and yeah. Sneed was a bad ass corner. Yeah. So I really hope we can find somebody to fill his shoes. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Oh, we got to get our wide receiver core stepped up. Yeah. We'll K- K- Kadarius Tony and kind yeah, of kind no. of and he's still on the team. Yeah. I don't know what is going on right now. I expected he was going to get cut before the season even ended. <laughs> And he is still on the squad, and I'm like, man. So that's another reason why I'm like, hey, if he's starting next year, we are screwed. Your boy Rasheed Rice is getting a little trouble too. Yeah, yeah. they always <laughs> seem to do that, man. It's like, dang, that that kid's gonna be a stud, yeah. and then, yeah, nope. yeah. I was gonna say he was he was looking like he was gonna be pretty good by the by the time it uh, maybe not like he'd probably take a step up this year, but yeah, I bet a couple years down the road he'd been really, oh yeah really well they hadn't cut him yet. Yeah. So there's still hope for us. Wait, I there's guess. some of the Lamborghini, right? He's there was a race in, I think it was <laughs> Dallas. There was, a, yeah, it was a race uh, between a Lamborghini and a uh, a Corvette or something, and uh, they ran into somebody, which is wild, I and saw- then fled the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Just even like even dumber. Like, yeah. I saw this meme on on Instagram. It's like NFL wide receivers after they sign a contract, and it's like GTA. <laughs> <laughs> this guy driving down no the road. Kidding. No kidding. That, that, that's hilarious. Do you watch baseball? Or I do. Yeah, okay, a little bit. Uh, Royals or? No, I'm a Braves fan. Really? Yeah. Okay. So because that's the only team that was close to Carolina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he's all over. The yeah, team. I'm all over the damn board. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm a Dodgers fan. Yeah. So, so. Uh, we just got. Otani, but then we just got he just got suspended. So, oh, yeah, man, for what? Uh, well, it was his his translator. Uh, uh, apparently, his translator it, yeah. was making bets in California <laughs> with. But apparently, he's saying his translator stole his money and okay. went and was betting on the Dodgers. And he said he had nothing, nothing to do with it. I don't know uh, what happened. <laughs> <laughs> how, I wonder how that goes with the sports betting now in. Because it's such a mm-hmm. prevalent thing, like with like are they're not allowed to bet on people, are, like I'll bet on themselves or anything. Are I, they? It's the I rules don't know are how changing. That works. It's like it's because it's kind of like a gray area. I think they can bet, but they're not supposed to bet on like NFL games. So like like <laughs> like if you're an NFL player, yeah, you can't okay. NFL games. That makes sense. but like you can bet on like NBA or whatever. Apparently, I think because that makes me feel weird. If they're yeah. starting to bet on themselves yeah. and be able to do that, I don't like it. So. <laughs> Are they're you, always going to pick the under. Yeah, exactly. And then they're just going to throw. <laughs> and then they're going to throw it. And yeah. then yeah. So it's like the the guy that um there was a guy that was like streaked at the Super Bowl and he went and put like a bunch of money on the odds of there being a streaker. So then he went and streaked at the Super Bowl and then got paid to go. Did streak. he really? Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, didn't know that, that, but that's brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. he, dude he just got, got thrown paid in jail, out. But he had the bail money. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 
He's not worried about a damn thing. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you do any sports betting or anything? Uh, I'm not good at it. Everything I every time I bet on something, I swear every game I bet on for the Chiefs, they've lost. So I just stopped <laughs> and I was like, I'm done with it. Hey, then you need to start betting on Ra- Raiders games, then so then then they'll start losing too, <laughs> yeah, right? No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they'll do that by yeah, themselves. I was gonna say. <laughs> do you do you get to go to many Chiefs games? I do. Uh, okay. We're a uh, season pass holder, so we okay. go as much as we can. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, so that's why the, your tour schedule is going to fall. <laughs> exactly. Like, no, oh, in the fall we go up here. <laughs> why is he in Kansas for 10 straight weeks? <laughs> Just hanging out, man. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> what what song off this upcoming project are you most excited about coming out? Man, I don't know. Um, I have one that's called 911, which I'm playing tonight that mm-hmm. I'm really stoked about. Wyatt McCubbin actually wrote on that one. Okay. And, man. It is a barn burner, and I don't have a barn burner, and I've been wanting one for a lot for a while. Yeah. So now that getting to put one out, it's yeah. it's a stout song. I'm you, you mean like like something like really fast? Yeah, like it's, really. It's just country. It's country yeah. gets man. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do you ever like when you write songs? Because uh, Tridio actually was telling us about one of their songs. Uh, write it so that like, you can have like the crowd like yell something at you like. I, I yes and no. If it happens organically, I'm all about it. Yeah. Uh, but if if it feels like it's yeah. forced, that's yeah. when I'm like, mm, yeah. I, I don't know if you listened to the, the last album, but See You in Court. I hadn't heard it, that one yet. Uh, it's a, but basically, it's about taking a, a significant uh, other to court, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Essentially. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, and it was like, in the middle of the song, I was like, you yell, you're not the father. <laughs> and it's like, uh, <laughs> it, he basically wrote that to like have them yell it back. That's back awesome. So, and it, it's really hype whenever they do. Oh, it. I bet it is. Yeah. That's stout. Should be good. Yeah. Who's, ha- go ahead. Well, who's like the, your favorite, um, and not even like a duet that you've done or something, but somebody you've got to play on a bill with or on a lineup with? Who's, who's your favorite act? Let's see. Combs is a stand up guy. Just an incredible guy, and I got to play with him actually in Ohio State, the stadium, uh, the Buckeye Superfest, mm-hmm. and that was nuts. That was the biggest show I'd ever played, and it was crazy. Because when you go out there and you you just look out and there's nothing but people, I, I don't know if, if I've ever felt anything like that, mm-hmm. but I've never got nervous before shows, and as soon as I took the stage, I was nervous. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different world. But, man, having them sing a song back is wild. Wow. Yeah. How do yeah. you fight those nerves when you're in a situation like that? Uh, Jack Daniels. <laughs> 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 he usually comes to save the day. Are, are, are you a guy that, like, you, you're going to hide it, like, off stage and then, like, middle act, you're going to, like, go off whenever uh, your bands are playing? Or are you going to bring it out there oh, with you? No, I have a, I've always have a double cup of Jack and Coke in my, <laughs> in my stand, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you, have a, do you have a pre-show ritual, like, anything you do every time before a show? Yeah, we always take a shot and then we pray. Um, and then – Go out there and give it a best, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> G- Jesus and Jack. Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a guitar collection or? Yeah, dude, it's okay. bad. It's really bad. So it's more I of just, a guitar addiction then. Yeah, it really is. And I I do a lot of playing in the studio and stuff too. So I have to have a lot of different sounds for different things. Or at least that's what I tell my fiance so she don't get mad at me. I'm like, I have to have this for this song. Um, but yeah, I've got a bunch of old vintage Gibsons, a lot of old Martins, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm collecting all kinds of stuff right now. Hmm. So, yeah. Do you have a favorite? Uh, like my a favorite guitar, yeah, is actually I got it here tonight. It's uh, called an Atkin, and it's actually from London. Hmm. Yeah, but it's like this custom company out there, and they uh, I played one when I was in Chicago and didn't realize it. I thought I was playing like an old mm-hmm. Gibson, and I was like, man, this Gibson sounds great. I was gonna buy it, yeah. and uh, he was like, no, that's an Atkin, and I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. So uh, he put me in touch with them, and I had them build this. Uh, hmm. guitar out here to my spec yeah. like everything from the tuners on it like they let me pick out yeah. and man it is it's a stud i love it who does your merch um we do it through manhead manhead yeah okay we but we, we got, have like we have another like we have a guy that does all the merch designs oh really that, yeah that's just yeah. a buddy yeah that's cool we we got a merch guy that we we we, we like we have to plug on the pie podcast. They're called CH Lone Star. Yeah, they uh, they're out, they're out of, out of Texas and uh, they do all the design work too. You can like we we send them a lo- logo. I don't I don't know if we got a, we got a shirt back yeah. there. We'll, we got a we'll, shirt for you. Yeah. Don't oh, let yeah. us forget yeah. that either. Yeah. Um, uh, we that we just sent them a lo- logo like kind of what we wanted. Then they turned it all all around for us. Did all all the design work. Man, super cool guys. They'll do they do anything. They'll do like socks. 
underwear, uh, <laughs> anything. Cameron Marlowe underwear. Yeah, Perfect to a show near <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put the uh, American flag and ball, ball exactly. in the <laughs> underwear too. It's perfect. And then you can have those on in the Humvee. <laughs> <laughs> so see, see, see Lone, Lone Star's a great, great company. Check, check them out whenever you want. Heck they're, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. They're, they're, they're awesome people. Do you play golf? You very bad, yeah, very okay. badly. But so, I'll, I'll so, go out there and hack a few times. Yeah. You know, so so we're in the same ballpark. Yeah, yeah. Golf. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to do it, and I've like, I had some kids that, that grew up, and they were always kind of like the pretentious kids that played golf, and I was like, man, screw the golf players. And then I'm like, grew up, and I was like, man, no, nah, the golf players are cool. And then I tried to go out there, and I was like, oh no, this shit's hard. <laughs> yeah. Like it is like yeah. difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I never had a chance to play golf in high school because it was always the same time as baseball. Yeah. So like, my baseball coach was like, "You can't." Play yeah, golf, I, I only play baseball. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was always, ah, it's fine, whatever. I wish I would have played golf so, sometimes in high school, just because I was like, man, that would have been like, I would have gotten so. I feel like I would have gotten so much better at golf than I am now because oh, yeah. now we have like a video series where we go golfing and stuff. Yeah. I look awful. I'm terrible. <laughs> Oh, yeah. dude, my swing is terrible. <laughs> and it's also expensive as shit to get into. I, I lose a whole box of balls every time I play, and there's like $40 for a box. I'm like, yeah, man, we, this is crazy. No, we beat that system. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. Y'all just, just go to the range, grab a bucket <laughs> out of there. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, but um, his neighbor actually yeah. like picks up golf balls like off the side of the road and stuff oh, by the shoot. golf course, yeah. and he sells them for 25 cents a ball. Oh yeah. hell and yeah! And so I got a yeah. hundred yesterday for twenty five bucks. So that's yeah. the they're like they're like almost brand new. Yeah. all of them. He Dang, he, yeah. he literally is there's like, probably some of mine in that bag. <laughs> <laughs> he he was he was really like, what brand do you want? And he's he's like had a couple buckets of Callaways. He's like, I think I so. He's got Callaways. it sorted. And, yeah, he's uh-huh. he's already got them sorted. And then he's like, he's like, just pick pick the ones out of the the Callaways you want out of there. So you just go through there and pick them out. Damn, that's sick. yeah. It was it's really awesome. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any uh, upcoming shows you want people to know about? Oh shoot, man! I don't even know where we're at tomorrow. No, we're home tomorrow. <laughs> um, you, you, to be going, honest with you, I ain't got a clue. I just okay. wake up. I was on saying, the bus. Okay. <laughs> you're going, you're going t- turkey hunting tomorrow. Yeah, right? no. When yeah. we get well, this next weekend. Yeah, next so, weekend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll put a link to your website yeah. down below where they can check out all those tour dates yeah. and uh, all your social media. And we can't thank you again uh, for coming on. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It's been I appreciate awesome. you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.